I, I wanted to spend the, the time that I have to make comments on explaining the, the process that we're going through for the different uh, color coding for both the public health map, which is published by DHHR on a daily basis and our school map. So as we have talked at some, at some length, we have adopted two different methodologies, two metrics <clears throat> that we want to use to make sure that we are fairly assessing the public health spread of COVID-19 in each one of our counties. And, and as we talked about early in the COVID pandemic, that we wanted to go from a state strategy where we are trying to treat each county as just part of a big state of West Virginia, which was that sort of suppression phase, the hammer phase. And then we wanted to move to a more precise phase where we looked at each county more independently as 55 parts of a whole and start to assess the COVID spread in each county so that we could make a fair assessment about the risk of opening of businesses and schools and activities, et cetera. Um, and as we started, we used an infection rate, which basically just detailed how many new cases of COVID did we have on a daily basis over a seven or 14 day period of time. And I'll talk about whether we use the seven or the 14. And then we corrected that for the size of the county by, by having everything uh, start to go back up by mathematics to 100,000 population. So every county was judged on a standard population of 100,000, which means on the small counties, you multiplied the populations to get to 100,000. And on the larger counties, we divided sometimes the counties like Kanawha County or Mon County to be able to get down to 100,000. And, and that is a very well accepted metric. And we created the five color codes to reflect a you know, low rate of COVID spread, which is zero to three cases per 100,000 population, a, mod, a, a, a low moderate, which was the yellow color, which is three to 10 cases per 100,000 population, a gold color, where we used a metric of 10 to 15 cases per 100,000 population. The orange color, which was is 15 to 25 cases per 100,000 population. And then the red color, which is over 25 cases per 100,000 population. And for most counties in West Virginia, and for any county greater than 16,000 people, we used the seven day rolling average. And the reason why we did that, again, just as a reminder, is because we looked at those outlier counties, those really small counties, because West Virginia is really kind of unique in, in, in the country in many states is we have very low population counties. And those county populations less than 16,000 were two standard deviations away from the median county, the middle population county. And so by mathematics and by statistics, that is a valid thing to do. And we separated those out. And those counties get a 14 day rolling average so that we get, gather more cumulative cases because we know from public health perspectives that you really need at least a total of 20 cumulative cases to make accurate and reproducible assessments of those counties. So, so just to really quickly review that, we have an infection rate that really looked at looks at how many new cases do we have per day on a seven or for the smaller counties, a 14 day rolling average. And then we correct those populations all up to 100,000 or down to 100,000, so it's equal. The problem with doing that alone though, as, as the governor really recognized and challenged us, was that in fact, what was happening is people understood that because we didn't account for how many tests were taken to get to that daily positive rate, that a lot, a lot of people figured out, well, if we get tested and we're positive, we're gonna hurt our numbers. And so the testing started to go down and down and down. And, and so we recognize that one of the real cornerstones, one of the most important factors in, in controlling COVID spread is doing a lot of testing. So we needed to try to solve the problem about how we really incentivize testing and start to identify those 
pre-symptomatic, those people that don't know that they're infected that can infect so many others. As we talked the other day, 8.9% of people infected with COVID infect 80% of everybody else. And the only way we identify them, because many of them are, are not even symptomatic, they don't know they have COVID, is test, test, test. And so what we did is then we came up with a second way to assess each county, the percent positive rate. And the percent positive rate is really just a, the relationship between how many positive tests do we have over seven day averages for all the counties over 16,000 or for the counties less than 16,000 over a 14 day average. Um, how many positive tests per day versus how many total tests did we do on that day? And as we've said, we really want to get that number up to seven, 8,000. Yesterday on the DHHR website, we were over 6,000. Fantastic. And, and, and what we did is then we looked at the public health literature and we figured out, and, and I'll talk about the CDC's guidelines, which then came out afterwards, after we did this, which really reflects the same thing, that if we are under 8%, between five and 8% on the CDC's map and public health, that is a moderate risk of transmission when you look at opening schools, et cetera. But we decided because we wanted to be really, really careful that we were gonna take that down even more. And we were gonna say under 5% rate of transmission, which is, is recommended by many governing bodies like the World Health Organization, et cetera, that we were gonna get you to the, we were gonna get the counties into the gold color. And if you're below 4%, you would then be in the yellow color. And if you're below 3%, you'd be in the green color. And the one piece that we didn't really think about that we are adding based on CDC's suggestion is we never made a, a, a relationship between the red and the orange color. And that color really should be 8%. So what we now are, are putting into, into action is if, if a county is over 8% of that positivity rate in that interval, again, seven day interval for counties over 16,000 population, 14 day interval for counties less than 16,000 population, same as we're doing with the infection rate. If you're over 8%, then you stay red. If you're between five and 8%, you would be orange. If you're under 5%, but greater than 4%, you would be gold. If you're less than 4%, but greater than 3%, you would be yellow. And if you're less than 3%, you would be green. And so by doing that, we are able to use that metric as well. And that metric really does incentivize testing because we want people to test more and more because the key is testing in itself is a mitigation strategy because we really very desperately want to identify those people that can spread to other people who are asymptomatic. And so that is how we are getting to the color coding on the public health map daily and then on the uh, school map. The only difference between the public health map and the school map that we're doing to make extra careful that we have everything right for the school map is we are stopping the, the collection of data on Thursday night. Friday, we're spending our DHHR colleagues and epidemiologists are spending Friday checking every bit of data with the local health departments to make sure that all the congregate data is separated from the community spread data, that any duplicates are taken out, and that we are, are identifying correctly both the places of origin for where the person is, which county a positive test and a negative test should be counted in. And secondarily, we're looking to make sure from a epidemiology standpoint, that everybody who's been infected, that we're correctly identifying those people who recovered versus those people that are still actively sick. And then, uh, and that's all day Friday. And then that data is put together. Then on Saturday, we're having the public health panel meet to look at how the data is applied to make sure it's all being applied correctly based on the rules that I told you. And then a recommendation is made to the governor and then the map for that week is posted. And lastly, I would just say again, as a reminder, that the map that goes up on the Department of Education website will be standing and be the active map for the entire next week. 
except if a county goes into red. If a county goes into red, that change will be made right away. And as we have said before, whichever metric, whether it's the infection rate or the percent positive rate, whichever of those two metrics is better, will be the metric that's applied for the color code of the county. So I think by doing this, we're really starting to see benefits in the testings picking up. We're starting to see some of the infection rates go down, which is really, really important and exciting. And we know that when we start doing a lot more testing, we may see that infection rate, because it doesn't account for how many tests we're taking, go up transiently. But that's not bad at all, because that means we're starting to identify more people who are infected. And we believe that then will lead us to seeing both the infection rate and the percent positive rate go down, which is what we want. Because ultimately, as we've said, the best predictor of safe schools and safe businesses and safe activities for each person in our state is low spread of COVID in that community. So I hope that helped. I know that was a lot to say, but we are very excited and we feel very much that this metric, as the governor said uh, in the last press briefing, really does start to get us where we want to be. And in fact, it's really very much consistent with what the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, has put out, except our map is a bit more rigorous than theirs, but that's because we wanna be extra careful with the health of the people in West Virginia. So thank you so much.